morning, everybody. Uh, please tell me in the comments below if you can hear me loud and clear. And I, I find that I have to go through this all the time. Almost every single time I go live, I go through this nonsense where I have to switch between my DSLR and, and my phone, for goodness sake. Somebody says, so much better. Well, it's, um, now I'm using my phone and I'm using my, I think I'm using data on there. I could be using my fi I think I, I might be using my fi on there. But yes, somebody says loud and clear. You're now loud and clear. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear that. I really am. The, the, like I said, and I keep saying this for the benefit of, for those of you that, that love to podcast and you want to live stream, the downside to using your phone as your main source of streaming is, there's several, but I'll just highlight a couple of things. Number one, when I use my phone, sometimes I get interrupted when people phone me. Number two, I'm not able to use StreamYard on my phone to throw up the texts. You know, when I'm doing some type of teaching or I want to make a point, sometimes it helps as you're talking to have text on the, on the screen to help your, your viewers follow you. And I also wanted to make a tip, just to give you a little tip. I find that using, sorry, my office is such a mess. When I use the lavalier mics, you know, these little pin mics, these are so much better than, than the, 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 the little wireless mics. I find that the lavalier mic is always is much better. All right, let's get into it. Uh, I just wanted to bring something to you that I know I, I brought this yesterday and, and lots of people have been speaking about this. And I think it's a very important conversation to have because it really gives us context. It sort of gives us a vantage point that every one of us has to take a very close look at and examine thoroughly. And once we do that and we are honest with ourselves, I think the conclusion is crystal. It's clear. And the first thing I'd like to talk to you about is the issue of former president and sixth president uh, Lungu, ECL, Edgar Chagua Lungu, who has now gone to the Constitutional Court demanding his benefits. Now, there's something he said there that was very interesting that I'd like to highlight. And let's be very frank and honest. He said that the withdrawal of his pension and benefits was a violation of his fundamental constitutional rights to hold an opinion. Now, the, the focus should be the last few words of that statement, to hold an opinion. What former President Lungu is doing is not holding an opinion. He announced it clearly, emphatically, and boldly that he is making a return to active politics upon uh, consultation under the umbrella of consultation, much supplication and prayer, that he had voluntarily decided to step out of the umbrella, to step out of the pavilion of the title of statesman, because that's what he was. Remember before he announced that he was returning to active politics, he would go jogging with his crew. You know, every time he, would, he was in town, people would love and welcome him. Oh, there's, there's the former president. That is the status of a statesman. After having served, you know, the word of God says, having done all, stand. Meaning, once, you, you're, once you're done doing your part, once you have run your race, once you have run your course, the moment you come to the conclusion of your tenure 
it is now time to embrace and cloak yourself with the title of statesman. And for a time, ECL was enjoying that status or that status of statesman. But the moment he announced and he took advantage of a memorial, the memorial of the late Michael Sato, who, who was the founding father of the Patriotic Front, ECL and his band of, of hoodlums, people like Rafael Savimbi Hajaka Nagachinda, people like Wagiven Lubinda, people like Bomani Lusambo, this clique of elitists sat at a round table and they deduced and they said, no, no, the only way we are going to deal with this issue is if I, ECL, make a triumphant return to active politics. Now, that decision came with heavy consequences. ECL is very aware of those consequences. ECL is cognitive of those consequences. ECL is fully enlightened about the consequences of deciding to make an active return to politics. He knew what he was doing. And upon the goading, upon the behest, upon the encouragement, upon the prodding of people like uh, Mumbi Piri, Mumbi Piri, who told ECL, no, you are ECL, you are your queer, who are your cabinet, who are your pocket, and character, you are in the attitude of folk from my politics. Ufum, we are still with droid, and character, so that we are children, I for so that you suffer with us. ECL turned to Mumbi Piri and said to her, Mumbi, that is something I'll place under consideration and much prayer. A short time after that, he announces, I'm coming back to politics, and says, these crumbs government is giving me, they're just nothing but crumbs. I'll return, and I'm going to go back into the political trenches. A short time after that, no, in our benefits, and in there, why? Because the rules are, the law says, okay? The law, say, it's the law, guys. And for those of you that are saying, no, he worked for those benefits, he deserves them. Well, there's a law attached to the process. Ooh, that's a good one. There's a law attached to the process. I said it yesterday and I'll say it again today. Life is about circumference. Life is about rules. Life is about regulation. Life is about a framework of existence. That's what it is. Now, imagine for a moment if we lived in a society where we just woke up and did whatever the hell we wanted. What kind of society would that be? Anarchy, chaos, apocalypse. But in order to maintain some semblance of order, you have to have regulations and you have to have rules. So the rules are clear. They say that once you attain the title of former president, you are now a, state, a statesman. In order for you to enjoy the benefits, in order for you to reap the benefits of the title of former president, former head of state, statesman, you have to step out of the pavilion of active politics. Active politics means you, 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 you throw yourself back into the ring. You throw yourself back into the fray. You now become a political agitator. You now become a partisan politician. Within the Zambian context, that's not a good thing. It's a bad thing. It's different 
I think, and, and the law is very clear about this, it's different when you, when you declare your support for a member of your party as a former head of state. For example, Balungu, Fidewa Abachita saved two times. Fidewa Abachita sway in two times. But if my people are going to follow up, he was a former head of state, which means now, his job now is to, to look at the next crop of leaders and whoever the organization or the party selects as the subsequent leader, the leader that came after him, his job is to simply support, endorse, and say, no, the party has decided to choose so-and-so, let us run with him. Simple. Now, when you throw yourself back into the fray, back into the fray, and you now say, I'm now, not only am I returning to active politics, but I'm now the one who's going to put my name forward. I'm now the one who's going to vie for the presidency again. You are bringing yourself problems. The state, the rules, the law will recoil. They shall retrieve those benefits. And when you cry foul, that is your Waterloo. It's your Waterloo. A self-inflicted wound that now you have to live with. ECL has made his bed. He now has to lay in it. It is disingenuous for him to now turn around and say, no, in my benefits young and earful, even though they are crumbs. I wonder, I'm curious. I'm curious. I wonder. When Mumbi Piri was encouraging ECL to go to cabinet and withdraw that letter of resignation, Kuti Nachokamu Ma politics. When Mumbi Piri was telling ECL, you go there, withdraw that thing, rejoin us in the fight against this administration, return to the fray, put on your boots, let us fight. I wonder. Did the ECL call Mumbi Piri after government withdrew the benefits? Did ECL call Mumbi Piri say, Iwa Mumbiwe, Firewa Chisi advise, Teapano Mbande Chula, Watira Tutuala Chula Pamo, Teapano Mba Amalaiti, Bale Fwaine Nde Lipila, Fiuwe Omumoto Ka, Bale Fwaine Nde Lipila, Nde Fumie Mpia Shandi, Iwa Mumbi, Shuga munga ndanga ya apwa. Baleti boss bill. Ia shuga. Baleti pusha ine pali shuga mumbi. Things that were taken care of by the government. I've got a staff. Security detail. Secretaries. Garden boys. Cleaners. In the house. Who need their monthly salaries. Mumbiwe. Are you aware? That after the government withdrew. My benefits. They want me to be paying them their salaries from my money. You've completely misguided me. You've put me in a conundrum. This is nonsense. So enough I'm going to sue the state. I'm going to tell them our benefits yandi. Dear fire, I didn't know what I was doing. I was misled by the likes of Mumbi Piri, the likes of Rafael Savimbi Hijaka Nakachinda, the likes of Boman Lusambo. You've left me in, uh, you see, you have left me in the situation of you see. Do you see how ridiculous this whole thing is? Ripple effects, buddy. Ripple effects. 
cause and effect, yin and yang. So, as I said yesterday, and I'll say it again today, and please forgive my repetitiveness and my redundancy. But Valungo was mis misled. He was thinking emotionally instead of thinking critically. As one who has saved twice, sworn in twice, what can he offer now as a former head of state that he didn't offer whilst he was the, the, the president of this great republic called Zambia? That's the question you must ask yourselves. <laughs> Lastly, Vice President Banalumango has urged Zambians to invest back home. Now, for those of you in the diaspora, you Zambians, Mwebe Karaku, America, England, Europe, Madagascar, the islands of the sea. If you're going to invest back in Zambia, and by investing, I would assume property, assets, things. Don't deal with the Kapembelenglube from National Housing Empowerment Fund, NHEF. Those chaps are crooks. They are now under investigation. They've been under investigation for more than two years, going on to three years, for fraud, mass fraud. As we speak now, there is a class action lawsuit being tailored against this Kapembele uh, Ngulube. He has swindled more than 800 Zambians living in the diaspora out of more than 50 million kwacha under the guise, under the pretext that he's selling land when in fact not. A statement was recently issued that urged people not to deal with Kapembele Ngulube. DEC approached Kapembele Ngulube and said to him, stop advertising property on that Facebook page of yours because this case, you know that this case is still under investigation and uh, don't continue swindling people. Don't. So for those of you in the diaspora, who want to invest in property here in Zambia as the VP has urged and encouraged you to do. Whatever you do, due diligence, number one. Don't do anything without a lawyer. Follow the procedure. Don't go to Facebook pages and start engaging. Don't. Kapembele Ngulube is a bona fide crook. Crook, don't deal with that chap. Don't. Do it at your own peril, as they say in Zambia. All right, that's what I wanted to share with you. Thanks for watching. Bye.